the diabolical Mr. Tiddles. For as long as he could remember, all Harry had wanted in the whole wide world was a cat, a furry, purry friend to care for and to play with. And you'll never guess what. This was Harry's lucky day. Today was Harry's birthday and a cat is just what he got. What a perfect puss cat, said Harry excitedly. I'll call him Mr. Tiddles. Every day, Harry made sure that Mr. Tiddles was as happy as a cat could possibly be. Every night, he tucked Mr. Tiddles up on the comfiest armchair and stroked his tummy until he drifted into a dreamy sleep. Harry loved his new friend. Mr. Tiddles loved Harry too, and he wanted to show him how lucky he was to have such a kind friend. First he brought Harry a fresh mouse, but Harry just went a funny colour. Then he left Harry's favourite treat at the bottom of his bed. Triple chocolate, a cream and custard cake with extra banana jam. Mmm, delicious, said Harry as he licked a dollop of cream. But where did this come from? Mr Tiddles kept quiet. The next day... Harry found a pogo stick and a train tooting its way around his bedroom. What's going on? Where has all this come from? he cried. Mr Tiddles just grinned. Day by day, things got even more puzzling. Before long, Harry's room was awash with rockets, rock star guitars, peculiar paintings, Fearsome dinosaurs, yummy jelly beans and a washing jetpacks. Then one morning, Harry awoke to find a horse named Alan in his bedroom. It was the last straw. What are you up to, Mr Tiddles, you rascally cat? He cried. Mr Tiddles didn't make a sound. He just went a little red in the face. What mischief was Mr Tiddles getting up to while Harry was asleep? That evening, Harry followed Mr Tiddles as he vanished into the night, slinking along high wires, leaping across rooftops and jumping over rickety fences. It was a job for Harry to keep up, until... Mr Tiddles reached the home of the Queen! Oh my, said Harry, as the rascally Moggy squeezed through the railings and started to scale the wall. Mr Tiddles is a cat burglar. How diabolical. Taking a deep breath, Harry followed Mr Tiddles over the palace gates, up the palace wall and into the royal bedroom. Stop, shouted Harry. Just as Mr Tiddles swiped the crown right off the royal head, Mr Tiddles froze. The Queen woke up and Harry started to fall. Help! he screamed. Whoosh! Quick as a flash, Mr Tiddles dropped the royal crown and dived across the room. Ah! With a swish and a swoop, and some splendid acrobats. Mr. Tiddles grabbed Harry's shoelace and hauled him back through the window. Phew, that was close, sighed Harry, as he and Mr. Tiddles landed in a heap at the Queen's slippers. The Queen, however, was not amused. Guards, she called, arrest these two intruders for acts of cheekiness against the crown. No, cried Harry. Please, your majesty, Mr Tiddles isn't a bad cat. He's just been taking things because he cares for me so much. You mean he's stolen other things too? cried the queen in dismay. She scratched her royal head and a royal thought popped into her royal brain. It's wrong to steal, she snorted, but I think Mr Tiddles has learned his lesson. I can see that he isn't a bad cat. If he promises to give everything back, we'll say no more about it. 
Mr. Tiddles looked at the Queen and gave the cutest furry, purry, pussycat smile that he could muster. With no time to lose, Mr. Tiddles returned the grand piano to the conductor at the opera house, the swishing jetpack to the astronauts, the noisy guitar to the rocket rock star man, and Alan to a very relieved cowboy. When they were finished, Harry gave Mr. Tiddles his biggest, bestest, squeezy hug. The two of them agreed, then and there, that having each other was the best present anyone could wish for. The End